Hello there. Well, hey, yeah, we're here. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> I, I liked it as the set ended. They had a shot of, of uh, the front of house board and uh, uh, Derek Featherson has been playing music off a turntable, gone very old school in this tour. Uh, the Macintosh company, he bought some gear from them and they threw in a turntable. So he's been bringing in vinyl and band members have been contributing vinyl and he's favoring the crowd with some radio head. At the oh, so that's very what's cool. being played out in the audience. Yeah, the we house, were wondering yeah. here. Me and my friends were wondering what that was since we weren't hearing the Macintosh, uh, the, the radio head track coming through here. Anyway, we're uh, you're, you're either watching this on Nugsnet or you're watching this on something that wants you to tune in to Nugsnet on YouTube or on Facebook or whatever. Uh, my name is David Gans. His name is Gary Lambert. We're enjoying the show from wherever we are. And we're doing that through the magic of Nugsnet, which does a spectacular job of transmitting this visual masterpiece and the audio to go with it into our living rooms where we can enjoy it. And I'm just thrilled to be part of this trip and just delighted with the music that's coming off the tube. Yeah, and boy, we are rounding the final turn on this tour. Two more shows in Boulder, then two up in Washington at the Gorge, and then they finish it off in San Francisco in mid-July uh in the hometown so uh we're gonna savor every moment of this and you can savor every moment of this uh, literally every moment of the tour if you were to buy the complete package you could go way back to the beginning at the, at the forum and watch the first show to the last or you can buy individual shows a la carte and watch these incredible live streams in hd and 4k video um and we hope that those who are just watching the free previews are tantalized enough to check things out. Maybe you're waiting for friends to tell you, oh, this is the show you've got to see, or that's the show you've got to see. Uh, there have been so many on this tour that it's, it's hard for us to choose. It's very, that's very true. I would recommend this and that, but there'd be so much else. I've been trying to keep up and take notes as they go by, but there's so much amazing music, it's really hard to keep track of it. And uh, Nugs has a streaming service as well, which gives you access to audio archives of Dead & Company going back to like 2016 or something, plus audio archives of lots and lots of other bands and a lot of Grateful Dead stuff like the Dick's Picks and Dave's Picks series and stuff like that, I believe is available there in their streaming service. In fact, we talked to Mark Pincus about it and we talked to Brad Serling about it. And they, the Nugs has gone to great lengths to make the Grateful Dead stuff available in chronological sequence so you can listen to it in a rational way, which right. we appreciate, we music geeks really appreciate. Of course, if you listen to enough of this stuff, rationality goes out the window and you just surrender to it. But uh, I just want to say that uh, you, can, you can hear all that music going way back and within maybe a day or so, you'll have tonight's show available to stream or to download in incredible uh, remix sound. After this goes out there into the world, uh, it gets remixed and tweaked a little bit. So it sounds like a live album that was labored over in the studio for months and months, and it's there in a day or two. This is really an incredible thing that we're able yeah. to avail ourselves of. And it's because the absolute reason for existence of Nugs.net is live music. Live it's the only music. service that's like it. Yeah. That's what we came for, really. Yeah. So uh, how about that first set, David? Run it down. For I a was pretty dang delighted with it. They opened with good times. They did that. What's now becoming a thing trucking into smokestack lightning and one lurched immediately into deal me and my uncle, dear Mr. Fantasy and a lovely Terrapin station in an unexpected place there at the end of the first set. And then a surprising capper of don't ease me in. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the time constraints are at Folsom, but it's so much fun to see the place from the, you know, the long view camera from the back and you can see the whole bowl with all the people in it and that lovely, there's those brick buildings, you know, it's right on the campus of the university there. So it's smack in the middle of uh, everything. And it's just really, really fun to see and the sun is shining and everybody seems very, very happy. Yeah, it is really one of the great things to take in beholding a crowd of that size in the daylight. And of course, when the band goes back on, 
the house lights will come down, it'll be dark, and then the lighting artists will get to do their magic, which is a whole other thing. And the focus changes in a really interesting way. So you'll be seeing that in just a little while. But first, we have an interview to get you, do we not? We, we do. We've been chasing this guy for a few weeks. We wanted to give him a little time to get settled in his new gig, but uh, we've been enjoying his work for the entire tour. And in fact, I've been enjoying his work for what, close to 30 years now, Gary? Uh, that's right. Uh, starting... And it, for me, even earlier, because I first saw him when he was a teenager playing in a ska band in Berkeley, California. So uh, Jay is a great member of this community. We're so glad he's in the immediate family now. He can't get much more immediate than this. Uh, and <laughs> we had the great pleasure of talking to Jay Lane. So we're going to go to that. Uh, once again, we will repeat that uh, we will not be coming back after the interview. Uh, we will see you again tomorrow in Boulder. But uh, in the meantime, enjoy Jay Lane. He's a very enjoyable fellow. As this is a really interesting interview, friends. Enjoy. We are so happy to be joined today by our good friend and someone who's been bringing so much to this music, Jay Lane. Hey, man. Hey, Gary. Hey, David. Dude. It's so nice to see you. And I, I, we, Gary and I have been watching the entire thing together from our separate locations so we can comment between sets. And every day we are embarrassed at how effusive we have to be about the music you guys are playing. Oh, yeah. I'm getting a little tired of saying, can they get any better? And then they keep getting better. Oh, man. That's, that's a wonderful comp. That's the best compliment of all, man. <laughs> it's yeah, just yeah. terrific. It just seems like awesome. Yeah. Uh, everybody's playing at the peak of their energies and their focus and their commitment to the music and having a great time too. The band just yeah. seems uh, really uh, so enthusiastic. And so uh, it's demonstrably and <laughs> visibly evident that, yeah. uh, that the music is going great. The audiences are responding beautifully. Uh, it must be an amazing experience for you to have uh, landed in this thing after many years, uh, you were not, you're not a rookie because you've been playing with Bobby for uh, about going on 30 years now. So you mm -hmm. know the music intimately uh, and you, you just have shown how well suited you are to this context. Yeah, it's funny, man. It's like the biggest gig of my life, right? Uh, once in a lifetime opportunity, uh, you know, like it's I, I was nervous as shit. I can say shit, right? Yes. Or yes. Okay. Uh, I, I was really nervous. Giant stadiums, you know. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden, something happened where it's like, wait, I'm not nervous. It feels like we're playing in the park or something. Oh. And I was like, why do I feel I'm not nervous? And I, you know what I, you know what I think it is. At least part of it is that uh, you know, for years and years, you know, with Bob, we were playing theaters, and these are all the classic state theaters and, and they're a thousand to 2000 size theaters that were built like a long time ago that, you know, for vaudeville or like every great performer that toured around played these theaters, right. And they're designed for performances, the seats, the stage is the centerpiece of the theater and the seats all face the stage. Right. And I, I just imagine this being a more giant version of that. But then when I was looking out there, I was like, wait a minute, man, these places are sports arenas that are built for like the, the, the centerpiece of the whole thing is the, the field. So it's like, so when you're on this, the stage is actually off to the side. And so when I'm looking out there and I see the bleachers, they're like facing that way. It looks like we're on the side of something. And then the people over there are like looking that way. And then, and be honest with you, man, without my glasses, my long range nighttime driving glasses, I can't see. It might as well be flowers or trees or something. I, just, I can't even see that, <laughs> that far. So somehow it doesn't, and then it's outside. It just feels like we're playing in the park or something, you know? And I think that coupled with um, some unexpectedly found new good chemistry that, uh, you, you know, that that's like, you, you know, it's funny because you know, I played a lot of jazz gigs and, and stuff like that, where it's like, you show up, you don't know who's on the gig today. It's like, oh, who's on the gig today? And then sometimes it'll be like, oh, man, that, you know, every, every, you, you know, you guys, both are musicians, you know, like, sometimes you'll be in a certain situation with certain people. And it's not even like, maybe even like the, the best players, but there's something about the chemistry with a certain group of people where, where it's just like, you don't get nervous about it. you, you it, or you don't think about it too much. You know, we used to have uh, um, 
this jazz, uh, like uh, Kenny Brooks, who used to be in Rat Dog, uh, uh, him and his uh, roommate Gary Jones started this band, started this thing, Alphabet Soup. Well, actually, before it was Alphabet Soup, he was just getting little jazz gigs because uh, a lot of these. Um, it was like the early '90s, and there was they have uh, you know multiple levels at these clubs, you know, there's like the techno level, you go downstairs, it's like the acid lounge. And then, so, and then it was, it was like really popular to have like a little jazz group in the, in the corner. But I, you know, I'd come up through the eighties playing in dance bands and, and like making people dance and, and, you know, and the, the concept of playing jazz to like as background music always kind of bugged me, you know, because I was a big weather report fan, a big weather report fan, loved jazz. But Weather Report played the fucking. I saw him at the Warfield. The Weather Report was touring the, those state theaters, man, yeah, yeah. and uh, that was, you know, so like the the whole concept of of like jazz being like, you know, oh, you won't understand. Then you know, there's like this disconnect <laughs> between the musicians and the audience. It has always kind of bothered me. So of course, I was not. So what happened was, Kenny and and the keyboard player Dred Scott. Uh, would they they had their heads they would write these jazz heads and melodies and chords and stuff and they'd play them and then me and the bass player would just play the same stuff but with a with a funk or, or hip-hop kind of groove oh. and of course it was the same time as like arrested development the dreadlocks and the sandals the whole consciousness thing you know um uh you know um diggable planets you know all the kind of yeah. you know like you know it's just like early 90s kind of thing and and uh guru jazzmatazz all that kind of stuff you know jazz hip hop but the funny thing was and and, it was, and then we had rappers too so so it was like it was like a little game it's like could we, it, we had to start out as background music but by the end of it could we get these people paying attention to us and up and dancing and all of a sudden they're crowded around us and we got a little thing going and uh and it, and we never rehearsed ever and we and it was just like one of those things where like the chemistry was always there and it was not a happy marriage of hip hop and jazz it was a battle those guys wanted to play their jazz and we wanted to play our fucking hip hop it was like fuck you uh, it's going to be like this <laughs> you know what i mean but that that tension that tension like i think it was a beautiful thing you know like because people can feel that it's like what's going on here you know and yeah. uh, and this is it's weird because these gigs started to feel that anyway, that's like the loosest I've ever felt at a gig. Um, the other thing that we were that I really prided that band on was, you know, we would play these little places where people like it's foot traffic, people just walking by, not necessarily coming and paying and go watch you, but they'll be like stopped in their tracks by like, what's this? Oh, I'm feeling this. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll hang out for this. I'll even pay for this, you know. Um, and and that kind of that feeling. Anyway, I haven't had that feeling on a gig up until now and now this starts to feel like that of course because you got jeff and john and O'Teal that have a lot of jazz sensibilities in their playing right yeah but then the hip-hop of this is more the grateful dead part of me of, of it to me that's 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 like the beat so you know that's the beat and the groove and all that and so it's like i i feel that same kind of not tension but that it was, it's beautiful. It's like, it's, it just feels wide open. I'm like, man, am, am I getting away with this here, man? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know? well, yeah, yeah, Jeff, I wanted to say, yeah, what you talked about, uh, that thing of playing in jazz clubs, you know, Bradford Marsalis said the same thing about the first time he played with the Grateful Dead. Bradford had for years been playing jazz in clubs or in concert settings where he felt the audience was like scrutinizing him. You know, like, oh, yeah, well, let me yeah. let, let me let me uh, pensively scratch my soul patch and uh, see if that uh, that chord voicing was was appropriate or whatever. You know, very, it's a, it was a very intellectual kind of, you know, audience scrutinization. Of yeah. music. And when he played with, with the Grateful Dead, he saw all these people celebrating and it brought out a side of him. He said, man, what an experience to play music for people who actually like music. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And, and you know, and 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 talking about your musical background, you know, you came out of this wonderful scene in San Francisco and the East Bay, which has produced so many great musicians. And you kind of prepared for this gig without knowing it because you know, I first saw you in a, 
a teenage ska band called the Uptones. And right. You played you play with the Freaky Executives, who are kind of a yeah. punk and world beat band. Yeah. And and so the qualities you bring to this music, it kind of transforms. You know, I'll, I'll hear an old Grateful Dead song and I'll say, oh, this used to be a rock song. Now it's kind of a funk song. Or now, yeah. it's kind of, yeah. now it's kind of a Caribbean sounding song because of what the different players, the younger players came into this music. And I think they've refreshed Bobby and Mickey's conception of the music to the point that it changes yeah. them. And the, and what and their experience, you know, brings new things out in all you guys. And it's just been an amazing kind of symbiosis between everybody. Yeah, man. Um, shit, I forgot what I was going to say. You fucking remind me of something. Um, uh, <laughs> shit. Um, yeah, I knew that was going to happen. Can I ask you another question in the meantime? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was going to say real quick. Um, the, uh, the, the only funny thing about that is I think, I don't think the freaky executives had a, had a song slower than 120 BPM. <laughs> and I don't think Bob <laughs> ever had a fa song faster than 100 BPM, 120 BPM. So that was, that has been also close to 30 years of learning to calm my ass down and feel these other grooves. I never played, I mean, the eighties, if you go Google like freaky executives, there's somebody's got a um, YouTube up there of the freaky executives live at the Greek theater. I think it was David Rubinson. We did a, uh, David Rubinson, he was a famous uh, yeah. uh, producer, producer and stuff. Yeah. He, like, he discovered Santana, Pointer Sisters, Tower Power, and all that, right. and uh, executive producer of first albums. He had the, he put together this world beat scene with like you know uh, the freak executives and like Zulu Spear, Mapenzi, um, nice. the Looters. Oh yeah, I um, remember him well. And uh, <clears throat> and and then they had a, 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 a world. It was like uh, uh, world beat. Yeah, they, yeah, it was like, it's world beat, you know? It's like, of course, it's like t t a little too broad, man. It's, it, we had a record deal that fucking fell apart, you know? They didn't know how to market our asses. But uh, <laughs> but, but anyway, it's, but there's a YouTube of the Freak Executives uh, at the Greek Theater, and it's it's fascinating, man. But the tempos are, it's like, ding, 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 when when we were in Ventura in April at the Skull and Roses Festival, you and Gary and I had a fascinating conversation. You said to us, you said, you've been playing behind Bob Weir for 25 years and you've heard this Grateful Dead music from Bob's perspective. And yeah. that that night you played in this all-star thing with all these Dark Star Orchestra guys and various other people. And you said it was the first time you had experienced Grateful Dead music in its sort of canonical form yeah. with all those traditional parts in place. And you were just really excited that you had gotten this new perspective on it. Because yeah. as we all know, as and as you said that night, if you just listen to Bob's guitar in isolation, it's hard to figure out what's going on because right. he plays so sparsely in so many places. Yeah. So and it was then, interesting to hear you yeah. talk about that. Yeah. And then, you know, so he started his thing with Wasserman and it was just like, so it was like, great. It's like, oh, it's like, you know, music minus one, or like you get to hear Bob Weir's thing, like soloed up, you know, without uh, Jerry on top of it or the keys or all the stuff. And and then Rob Wasserman was like the perfect accompaniment for that. And then they added me and then it's all of a sudden a band. And then it's like, oh, then Jerry dies and where's that lead guitar? Come on, we got to get that lead guitar in there. And then, so they, you, you start this this almost backwards way of, of, of re- redoing the thing which in a way is like you know you got to look at bob's perspective like that's what he wanted he wanted to that's all he did when he met jerry he was like hey man you know they didn't think oh this is going to be some iconic it's going to fit together perfectly like this it's like it just fell together and yeah. he's like man maybe some, some other thing will fall together who knows and uh but but then you know because the reason why he wanted me on the gig because i didn't know anything about the grateful dead you know i like i knew very little about the grateful dead and uh, and so did everybody else that got on that gig. He didn't get. In fact, if I if I walked into that day, the day I met Bob Weir, if I had dreadlocks and Birkenstocks, he would have probably said, "Map out of here." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I came in. I came in with a crew cut, a football jersey. Like, all right, you're, 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 you can play on the Tamil Pius Chiefs in your spare time. Yeah. But, so he but, was like. He was like, you know, and I was like, yeah, I, I guess I should listen to it. He goes, no, nah, I don't listen to it, man. Just do what you do. And like, okay. So, but then, you know, like, it just, it was just more and more challenging to, you know, like, like you're saying, like, to, to hear the whole of the thing. Example, 
the end of throwing stones. Uh, you know, where it goes to, you know, ashes, ashes, all, all that kind of goes to that funk part, right? Yeah. And, uh, and Bob goes, bow, 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 bow. Yeah. Bow, 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 bow. But other guys are doing other stuff. He's the only yeah. one doing that, right? Yeah. yeah. So Rat Dog, for years, he got the whole band is playing that in unison. And that used to drive me nuts. <laughs> you know why? Because <laughs> okay. nobody's. For a dotted half note, nobody's playing a damn thing in the groove except me. They're like, <laughs> one, two, three. Da, da, da. I was like, come on, man. You're li- leaving me to the one, two, three entirely by myself. <laughs> <laughs> but then, well, but then, then you listen to the, the you know, the, then you listen to the Grateful Den is like Garcia's own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and Phil, yeah. I, I don't know, Phil's doing something else too. So then it's like this puzzle piece thing fitting in there. So now, then, and so now I think I'm on cloud nine because you got, you know, John and O'Teal and Jeff, they're, they're filling in all these parts and, uh, and the, the puzzle pieces are, are there. But with this new, like you said, like this new kind of jazzy kind of sensibility, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, so, it's, it's, it's really, it, and, there's you talk about playing these huge places what i get from this band is a real intimacy it's like you could be playing a club in terms of the way you connect with each other yeah that's what's weird and and maybe and i think the technology has helped that you know monitors and everything are good and so you can sort of you can sort of ignore the hugeness of everything and just be looking at each other and making contact so we we should come around we haven't got that much time here unfortunately i want to talk about the way you've connected with mickey and the way the drum sequences oh yeah so it's been amazing the the thing like okay for instance hell in a bucket i learned so much from mickey wharf rat hell in a bucket after the vocals there's that little spot where it's kind of space. Now I didn't know. I didn't. I you know, we're playing with Rat Dog all these years. I just played through that shit, you know. And Mickey's like, stop. He's like, wow. and I'm like oh yeah, listen to that. And, so, right. and then you come back in. You know, right. it's like, oh man. Plus, plus, not to mention those three burgundy toms that Mickey's got across the front. Those are his old ass fucking Grateful Dead toms. They when he does those, it sounds like all those recordings. I'm like, oh man, <laughs> yeah. listen to that, you yeah. know. And, and you want to know where to leave space for that, you know. That's yeah. Like, you, know, you want and, to know and, what and not to play. Rat, Warf, yeah. Warf Rat too. After it, in the story, hold yeah. up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay, come back in. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And and so once a night, you guys get set loose on what must be the greatest toy store a drummer's ever been let loose in that wall of drums and the drum sequences on this tour have just been so powerful. I, I go up to the rafters of, of the stadiums and I'm still feeling the drums in my chest, you know, and I'm oh, still, wow. yeah. you're also still hearing the subtleties, which is incredible. You know, as yeah. a tribute to Derek Featherstone and also Derek Featherstone, man, I gotta, I gotta say, you know, cause, cause, uh, <clears throat> you know, you always want to be able to hear, the bigness of what what you're doing or like if you play something and then there's a space where there's silence for a second you want to be able to hear it kind of go out there you know Mm -hmm. and uh so yeah i mean because i'm wearing in-ear monitors but but it's it's there's not a lot of you know low end but i'm getting it from everywhere else and it's just it's just like the perfect whatever's bleeding in from out outside plus the in-ears it's it's I, i can't believe it sounds so good. And now it's consistent. Now every day I get up there, it sounds consistently that good, you know. It sounds it sounds great from where I'm sitting. I've been couch touring this entire tour and the 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 uh live the video stream mixes are great and then the remixed download versions are also spectacular. So I've been oh, hearing good. this I've been hearing three different mixes of some of these shows. Jay, I oh. hate to say it, but we're starting to run out of time because there's a live band that's going to be returning to the stage in a few minutes. Including you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I better get back up there. <laughs> Right. Maintain the illusion this is happening in real time. But man, Jay, we could we could talk to you for hours. Come on the radio show sometime so we'll have more time to stretch out and talk, man. But All right, you know, yeah. I, we'd I, love I, to have you on tail sometime. We could take calls from listeners and stuff too. It'd be great to have you. Yeah, man. Hell and, yeah, man. Let's yeah, do and, it. And, and, as someone uh, you know, I've known you for a long time, even predating your connection with Bobby, because I knew the bands you were playing in with Charlie Hunter and all that. 
I'm so proud of you, man. You know, and 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 you know, you mean the world to me, and we're so glad you could join us. Uh, and we'll be talking more in the years to come. Uh, thanks, man. Thanks, you guys. I, I feel pretty good about you too, Jay. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> it's been so great much. having you. Take care. Right man. on. All right, let's right. do it again. All right.